this particular strand of woke virus just might be the worst biohazard to ever happen in the Resident Evil franchise. The president is like, how long do we have until the virus reaches the mainland? And the scientist standing next to him holding a dramatic pause is like, sir, it's already here. Are you down with the censorship and pleasing retards? Because if you are, Crapcom, Cutcom, whatever you want to call them has the game for you. Hit the like button and subscribe lads now. Now has anyone ever watched or read 1984? Men and women cannot fall in love. They can't even look at each other. And don't you dare even think about flirting with women, you misogynist. Because remember, healthy banter between genders is evil, so saith the cult. Mark my words, Capcom will send out a memo to their developers saying, next up, no human interaction. What am I talking about? Well, according to sources, sharing in development footage, documentation and photos Resident Evil 4 VR has censored story content and dialogue. Removing scenes and achievements, the orations to scenes and dialogue were focused on anything that the gaming news media and the social justice crowd may deem as misogynistic. Uh, someone tell these fairies that Facebook and Twitter are not where you want to go to find customers, pandering to people who complain but don't buy your products is a good business strategy. Didn't Capcom already go through this the last time they tried to appeal to western audiences? And they ended up living in the red for multiple fiscal years. Yeah bravo. Go ahead you fucking dummies. Because when it comes down to it let Capcom, Bandai Namco be sacrificed to the altar of woke. Because all woke means to me is similar to council culture in a way. It's just a politically correct way of saying censorship and I can't believe I'm about to entertain this but here we are. Get ready because it's like these morons forget that flirting is how relationships usually begin and that usually leads to marriage which leads to the blue head SJWs being born. Yes that's true even they were initially conceived in this manner but unfortunately they were dropped on their peanut heads a few times too many and that explains the extremely low IQ but wait they don't even believe in biology so forget about that whole analogy. But if this offends people about other people flirting, just imagine the same lunatic's reaction to Shiva's costumes in RE5. The little hippie brains will explode. Are they gonna censor those outfits? Oh wait, they already did. Remember how they censored Claire and Jill in the latest remakes for global adaptation? Where were the f that means. I guess the female form is apparently offensive. That's a funny way of advocating for feminism anyway. They probably look in the mirror and see a giant pig and feel insecure about anything that looks better than they do, which newsflash everything does. What exactly is the world coming to when men and women simply finding each other attractive is considered offensive? I guarantee you though, if those flirty dialogues were man to man, it would be considered a Amazing by the woke media. I wonder how this will affect the sales of the game though. We still have the game on consoles going back to 2005. We don't need this watered down censored garbage and we all know that the people that they're trying to pander to with these changes are not going to support the product. And all of this appealing to modern audiences is exactly why I've put a wedge between me and modern games. This is exactly why I've been been stockpiling retro and Japanese imported games for the last few years. Now, the infamous Capcom Ragnar Locker ransomware hack and subsequent leaks of 2020 revealed information about upcoming games, some of which seems to have come true along with politically correct business strategies. To avoid drama and controversy, the documentation discussed avoiding discriminatory and prejudiced language. Other points of note included gender neutral cosmetic options and only featuring certain ethnicities or portraying them as unequal or stereotypical and avoiding obscene naughty language and jokes unless inevitably based on the context of the story. Get this, this made me really laugh. The Last of Us Part 2 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider were given positive examples of LGBTQ characters while Peach and Zelda were damsels in distress. Let me make this clear. If you're going 
going to use The Last of Us 2 as some kind of measuring stick, you are a f***ing dumbass. You should go out of business just for that. Anyway, what I got from this is that flirting is only bad because Ingrid is beautiful, but if she looked like fucking Abby Zilla, they would call for even more flirting, but not only that, they'll put some more Neil Druckmann going in dry with his favourite gym bro, Abby Zilla. But you know what, hold on a second, what is wrong with characters like Zelda and Princess Peach? Look, if you honestly consider Zelda and Peach as some kind of negative stereotype, types you are a fucking dumbass again you belong on the breadline let alone near established ips like this never talk to me about anything ever again anyone who thinks that zelda is a negative stereotype for women has never played the legend of zelda in their life and because of that no more yen for you buddy now the damsel in distress is wrong but the dudes in distress trope is perfectly fine like in the diabolical mess known as he-man and the the masters of the universe or Luke Skywalker in Star Wars. Censorship is the death of creativity. Everything in the gaming industry is either a rehash, a retcon or reboot, just like the movies and the comic book industry. And this just reaffirms when things go mainstream, passions go out the window and projects are designed for the lowest denominator. Now I know I didn't talk about this when this initially dropped, but now is the perfect time. The umbrella Academy just revealed its latest diabolical creation. The low T-Virus. Imagine a world of Resident Evil where zombies only care about diversity. See, I thought that Resident Evil was copyrighted, but I guess anyone can use the name now. Because a new Netflix show is coming out called Resident Evil and the tagline is you can't spell flop without woke. Will Netflix have to lose a billion dollars before they get the same spanking Disney is getting? We'll have to wait and see. But as far as the show is concerned, Resident Evil is supposed to be horror. This looks like a tea party in safe space. It's a college classroom sitcom. Welcome to class everyone. Today we're studying gender studies. These five women look like they would struggle to tear up a cereal box, let alone deal with zombies. They look like stand-ins for a Zoolander spin-off. I love how the real Resident Evil is full of battle-scarred and battle-hardened warriors loaded to the brim with guns. And the Netflix adaptation is one old guy and a bunch of girls in designer clothes and immaculate hair. The director for this thing, I don't even know what to call it, said that the details are kept under wrap. They should keep the entire show under wrap. Never show this trash ever. They should just call this show Resident Pandering. I use horror as a way of escaping reality, but I guess we already live in a horror movie. The jokes write themselves at this point. Somebody's wife's boyfriend will like this show, I guess. To be serious here, for a second. Making new characters requires effort. There are backstories to create, motivations to explore. That requires time, effort and creativity. It is much, much easier to just palette or gender swap a character and grab virtue signal points. When will Hollywood learn that not every video game or animated TV show needs a live action adaptation? They almost always end up sucking ass, but in one breath Hollywood is like, why are we losing so much money? And then they pull a move like this. Anyway, I have the original untouched version of RE4 on my Switch. So the RE4 VR remake can suck balls and on that bombshell manics out.